two tables. That way, it goes all the way across. I'm gonna use tape and Sharpie, mark all the things that I need. I don't have this giant mess anymore. It'll be, one side will be just for engine, one side will be just for lighting. The battery died in the GoPro, so you didn't see a lot of what I took out. It's mostly all the engine side stuff and all the EVAP stuff from the ABA harness. Now I can have all the AC stuff out of it and the fan control. So all that's going to remain factory, but I'm going to make it like its own little sub harness. Wiper motor and starter interlock. So I've got a lot of stuff. I've already cut the, I cut the uh, Mark IV one a long time ago. When I was first starting this project, I have it all over there in a the box. I'm going to be cleaning this up now, and then I'll start uh, bringing out the Mark IV stuff, and we'll see what needs to go where, and maybe even start laying in the car pretty soon. That's a lot of time on this wiring stuff. The other things I have to do, I have blue plug. Um, it usually goes in a cowl on a Mark IV, but obviously there's nothing like that here on this car. I have to figure out how I wanna start doing those wires if I just wanna hardwire everything in because these are not, um, they're not weather sealed as you can see. So if I, if I leave them up in the cowl, they're just, they're gonna corrode badly. These are the only two plugs that I really need to get the car to at least talk to VAGCOM. That's the 14 pin connector for all the ECU coil and fuel injector wiring uh, power. And then these two connectors, they're also up in the cowl on a Mark IV. This one is just for the clutch pedal switch. This is all the cruise control stuff. I'll be wiring in later whenever I get a chance. I would like to have cruise control working off of the, the Mark III uh, cruise control stalk. I should be able to figure that out. So in here, see I have the harness. It's just laid in place. But I'd like to have it kind of go where the starter wire used to go. So I'll have it in there and on under this little uh, battery tray and going up. Looks like the oxygen sensor wiring off the Mark IV stuff um, should be just fine. Engine side plug is easy. It's, you know, it's just coming right up here and it can go across. But right now I have it up in there, so it's just out of the way. The, the chassis side one, that's the one being a real pain, giving me a lot of hassle. Like, um, it has the math in it too. But yeah, all these, these are the connectors that are usually in a Mark IV, they'd be right here. Plenum, they call it, with a, a gasket all the way around it so it doesn't leak. I think I'm just gonna have to hardwire everything. Uh, it's been a long tiring day. I was really hoping to be further along, but it's just, uh, it's a lot. I have every, all the chassis stuff plugged back into the fuse box. What I'm planning to do next is connect the last two plugs in the fuse box, which are these G1 and G2 in the C2 fuse box. If you look at them right there, in the back of the fuse box, they're right here. The wires that are in here are the ones that I have to connect to these two plugs. And, and then the same thing with this. This gray and white wire is actually the K-line. So you can uh, put an OBD scanner on it, which in my case will be Vagcom. Since it's a Mark IV, it's 
relatively smart, so I'll be able to see if there's any misfires live, and I'll be able to see that you know all the stuff with the the pedal will be working, all the stuff with uh, the clutch switch, you know, every everything that I'm going to be basically wiring myself. I'll be able to see if it's actually going to work. I think what's going to have to happen is that wiring that I'm going to do now is probably going to have to go into a new hole. This stuff is so tight, the chassis side of it, and it's giving me such a fight and I really I wanted it to be kind of its own standalone harness so if I ever I don't know wreck the car I would just be able to unplug everything to be a pretty easy swap into another car trying to get it nice and clean I have the the 14 pin connectors actually pretty far down um, but this is weather packed so this this will be fine out here it has the little um, rubber booties in the back of the keep water from you know, corroding everything but yeah, you can see I'm, I'm a little defeated on this but um, I'm trying to knock it out tomorrow Sunday I think I'm gonna have to tow it out and just work on it sparingly throughout the week but you know either way it's got to leave tomorrow it'll be pushed out into a spot into a new home I'm trying to knock out as much of the wiring harness as I can I have but it's uh it's it's only just the uh, the chassis harness basically so this has nothing to do with the engine harness, but uh, it's taken a lot of time and it's done. I've had to merge some things. I've had to take a lot of things out. Took all the ABA wiring out and changed the entire layout of it. And I wanted to retain AC. So that's really the whole reason behind taking this much time. Um, if I wasn't keeping AC, yeah, it would have been a lot easier. I retained everything and everything should work uh, as it's OEM so here's what it looks like I think it looks pretty good I uh, got some Tesla tape and ran it all along I always like reusing as much from the stock harness as I can so like you see this is like this uh, weird like braced piece of plastic but uh, it contours really nice, snaps into a locating stud, and it fits great. You know, used parts know how to work. I got as much in here cleaned up as possible. Uh, yeah, this was the, the biggest issue, was just getting all this AC stuff out. On the ABA, it has a wire coming down from here, because this is the ambient air temp sensor. Um, it has another wire and plug, and like, it's like four maybe five six feet of wiring to go down to another uh external coolant temp sensor so you have the coolant temp sensor in the car to do your gauge tell the ecu how everything's working but then there's another coolant temp sensor on the side of it which is i think it's a ac thermal shutdown so basically that means if the car's overheating it'll turn the ac off it's two wires you just cut them and Put, put them together. I was gonna try to do a, a, a test fire of the car, but for the amount of time to do that, I just figured I'd do the chassis harness and then it'd be done and then I'd have a clearer head and then I'll just knock this out. I'm, I'm just triple checking the wiring and stuff because um, a lot of the forums, they're old, they're dead, um, and they're mostly people from the UK. So a lot of the wiring is it, it, it's very different um they'll have like four or five different wires that are not even in the u.s harness and then they'll have three or four wires that they tell you go to the same exact place and do the same exact thing but they're three totally different wires I took each wire out and i've been chasing it through the book um there was one where it says uh ecu constant power and you know, I labeled it on one side of the harness, and then I go to the other side of the harness, I look at it, it's just a straight green wire. What's that for? Oh, well, that's just an oil pressure wire, so I would have been putting that directly to the dash. It's just, it's a lot different. Um, best thing you can do is use the A2 resource. Um, they give you everything for, for uh, CE1 and CE2, obviously, since it's a Mark III, this is a CE2 car. Um, so it's like 
decent amount easier. But you, know, you can just go through. If it says A1 right here, you just go over here to the fuse box. And you can see that right here is the A1 plug. It tells you exactly, you know, A1, O1, left headlight, what exact color it is. This is a really good source, but still there's some that are a little iffy in there. So don't just go off with some goon on the forums. I always have Bentley manuals for these older cars. I mean, that's, make sure you're looking up your exact year. Yeah, I, I tried to go off the forum just because it's it seemed right. Um, but again, it's old and it was updated numerous times. It just, you just gotta do things yourself sometimes. Get the, the chassis harness back in, plug everything in, try to locate it as nice as possible. Going to use the this other hole right here because um, I have a few of these Mark III grommets. Uh, this fits the firewall perfectly and has the holes for it. I'll be able to run all the Mark IV ECU wiring through this. Just gonna hardwire everything in. Um, it's not technically hardwired because it can be removed. All you have to do is, you know, uh, you move that little latch on the fuse box and then you can take each connector out. So that's how it's gonna be ran. It's gonna be ran directly to the fuse box, but it will be removable. So back again, next day, still on the wiring. You know, a lot to do. Um, so I went back over some wiring, figured out some a few more wires that have to be dealt with. Um, but chassis side, it's it's good to go right now. So what I'm going to do is put the chassis harness in. And again, uh, there's multiple holes in the firewall, so I'll be putting uh, the engine side stuff through here. So that's what we'll be doing. Um, help get the uh, chassis harness in place. Because I've got the chassis harness, it's fully in. Uh, you can see it runs up here, nice, tucked away. It's connected to everything, alternator, starter, reverse light, AC. Um, pump over here follows, you know, it's got the nice uh, OEM plastic down there. Plugs in perfectly to the fan control module. Here's the it's a brake, the recirculation flap, and the uh, coolant bottle. It's all sitting right here. Everything's coming over here. This is the ECU coil live wire. Um, I haven't plugged in the ambient air temp sensor and the wiper motor yet. Uh, it's hanging out over there um, because uh, I want to get the chassis side harness done of the ECU. So I'm gonna, I want the chassis side in first. That way it's in, it's underneath. I'm probably gonna run it under here. And it'll be nice and clean, tucked away. And then I'll plug uh, this stuff in. Then I'll throw the engine side harness onto the ECU. That way this is the last thing. So if I ever have to remove the engine, it's just unplug it, you know, pull this right out, pop it out engine can come right out no problem over here i have the chassis harness right here um i've been cleaning it up and put the you know the nice tessa tape on it it has electrical tape underneath for structure but so down here i have it running here's the the wide band and the secondary o2 um probably not going to use it but i felt you know, it's there, it's more trouble to actually remove it than to just run the thing. And then you come over here, you got the ECU ground, you got the ECU relay. This is not a weather pack connector, but what I'm gonna do is just put silicone in every single port, and that'll keep it from getting corroded. Uh, it's, it's the best option right now, and it'll be off the ground, or off the rain tray, it'll be up in the air, so shouldn't really be too bad. Uh, here's the other side of that uh, purple and black wire over there that I showed you for the coil. So as soon as uh, this relay turns on, it sends power to the, uh, the coil. Here's the math that's hanging out. Um, I've left all these out right now. So what I'm going to do is just cut them and hardwire everything in. So I've been going through all these, checking Bentley, 
cut the wires back here one at a time so see this wire is a brake switch cut the wire off back here i'm going to uh, connect the wire here i have lots of wiring harness i keep i keep everything from swaps and part outs and stuff so i have tons of wire it's oem wire it's good stuff won't have to worry about it you know like the the, the pep boys brand stuff that's says it's 18 gauge but it's really like 20 22 so you can see these are all nice and thick so i can match thickness of the wires and the other really good benefit is when you have oem wiring harness like this to sort and cut out is you can usually match up wire colors so if i need a green and yellow guess what there's a green and yellow need a black and yellow i guess what there's one right there that's that's a great help um i, I was telling you guys i had this other Again, this is from a part out. This is from a Mark III. Uh, this will fit the other grommet hole. So these are the last two uh, ECU engine, all that kind of stuff. Um, power supplies right off the fuse box. Gray and white is the K line, and this is the Speedo. And I have everything labeled out here. So I'm going to put this in the car, plug it in and then just start doing it all outside. So this stuff will be in the car, in place. The fuse box is already down, so I'll know that I have plenty of room for everything. If I ever have to pull the, the fuse box out for any sort of testing, I'll, I'll have plenty of room, it won't be too short. All the wires that I'll be running up here, um, I won't have to slice open this because what I'm going to do is just run the wires through here then I'll then I'll connect everything have these six wires I'll have to connect all six of those this blue plug has all the gas pedal stuff um, so I'll have to run those wires have to run the brake light wires and the clutch wires so I have a decent amount of wires that I have to add through this little harness that will all just be and I'll just make them real long and uh, and then I can just terminate them inside the car. But what I really want to do is be able to have the engine harness in place. And, and, and as soon as it's in place, then I can tape everything up, finish the, the wiring on the inside of the car. And then I can uh, power everything up, put VADCOM in, and make sure that I have, uh, I'm connected to everything. Doing the, uh, the engine harness side, I'm extending wires right now. What I'm doing is I'm just adding a longer wire cutting it off at these plugs behind it where here you can see i'm doing this green and yellow pin back in here i just cut it off connect it to the new wire leave this wire connected until i'm completely done on this side with the, the position on the gas pedal and then as soon as i'm done i'll uh, make a mark on this and then i'll cut this off and then that way i can get mixed up just cut them off you know, go down the line. These expectations, they keep weighing me down. My heart is begging me to get the hell out of my head. I'm gonna live inside the upside down. For a minute and pretend. Honey, I'm a perfect ten. Whoa. Still way far behind. Um, you know, it's a lot of stuff when you're just sitting here wiring and extending things. Out of time today. It's already 5:30 or whatever. Uh, but it's Sunday. Cars got to get out, so just tried to knock it out on the weekend, but didn't doesn't seem possible tonight. Um, got the wiring ran to the fuse box and plugged in. I just got to get it ready to tow out, basically. So, lots of stuff to clean up. I uh, had the goon Alex come over and help me for a little bit. It just had him clean the engine bay and stuff. Oh, it looks a little nicer in here. Getting dirt and stuff off. Make it look nicer. We've got the seats down now. We're going to start putting some stuff in it. Probably put the front end on it. Uh, as of now, that's it.